It's a pleasure to be here today, just as it has been a pleasure to be a Churchill Fellow. It has been a pleasure and a privilege. I want to start by explaining a little bit more of my context. I am a teacher in Belfast. I come from Cookstown, which is right in the centre of Northern Ireland, but I teach in North Belfast, which is noted for a lot of difficult things. North Belfast has, um, as already been said, one of the highest suicide rates among young men uh, in the UK. And one of the reasons for that in North Belfast is high unemployment. And another one is lack of motivation. And it is felt by all of us in education that the better um, the education, the less likelihood there is of our young people continuing into paramilitary organizations and drugs culture and all those kinds of things. So it's something that we consider uh, to be very important, this idea of trying to improve literacy. So I wanted to find out really practical ways. I totally agree that with, um, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. So I wanted to learn ways that would help uh, back home and that would make a genuine difference. I have so many lessons that I've learned and I know that I will continue to learn. I just want to share one from Canada, one from Finland, and tell you how um, I've been adapting those in my own situation. And then I want to just to mention three key concepts that I really picked up during my travels and during my research. In Canada, I spent my time in Montreal because I wanted to learn about bilingual uh, teaching. We have an increasing number of pupils for whom English is not first language. So I wanted to learn uh, skills and I wanted to learn from the teachers and the educators I met things, oh, things that would actually really make a difference for us. One of the things that really I enjoyed during my time, I don't know why that's moving on, Sorry. One of the things I really enjoyed during my time in Canada was meeting other teachers and having time to talk to them because often it feels like we're always rushing to the next meeting and I really appreciate everyone who spent time talking to me. And one of the lessons that I learned was the importance in Canada of pupils helping younger pupils. So I went to one school and they had a fabulous drama teacher who said that their literacy was really improved by allowing pupils to uh, create drama and then go to local primary schools and present the drama. And I thought when I came home, I wanted to do something a little bit like that for us. I didn't think I could start off with um, working with different schools. So within our school, I started a reading program and I asked for volunteers among the senior boys to help the junior boys. And I did, a, a, I did a, um, just an assembly on it, and I thought, maybe if I get four or five volunteers, I got 40. And I was so astonished, and those boys were amazing, and they came week after week. It was a 10-week program. We did a very simple reading level, age level test at the start of the program and at the end of the program, and then three times a week for 15 minutes over those 10 weeks, the younger boys read to the older boys. They were paired off, something so simple it had a massive impact. The older boys loved it. They refused to quit. If they couldn't come, they would send a replacement. They took it very seriously. The younger boys absolutely loved it. And at the end, every single pupil's reading age had improved by at least six months. And in one case, by two years, six months, just because the older pupils were investing in the literacy of the younger ones. And I find that astonishing and inspiring, and it's something that we're definitely going to continue. Finland was amazing. I traveled more in Finland. I uh, started in Lapland and worked my way down, and I spent a lot of time in university schools, which are schools linked to universities and education departments, and where they do a lot, they carry out a lot of research. One thing that I really took away from Finland was that reading is highly regarded. The library is the heart of the school. The schools are designed that way. The library is the heart of the school and the public library is the center of the town or the village. And everyone borrows books. 
And it was just wonderful to see that. And when I came home, I was telling my principal and he said, okay, we have some money. We can do a refurbishment of our school library because it has been, let's say, languishing for quite a while. So I didn't want just my ideas to go forward. I asked the boys, the student reps, what they would like to see in our library. And up until that point, the library had lots of shelves um, jutting out and then a center with computers over here. And the boys themselves came up with the idea that they wanted no computers in the library, that they wanted it to be a quiet space, that they wanted it to be a space where they could hear themselves think and where they could read without being pestered or without being annoyed. So that's what we did. And hopefully the library will be um, used increasingly as we continue um, throughout our years ahead. And we're already starting another reading program, not um, in addition to the, the peer one, another reading program for junior boys to help encourage them to read and to give them prizes when they uh, read a certain number of books. So hopefully that will go well. The key concepts that I took away. First of all, the teachers in Canada and Finland really know their subjects and they have a genuine confidence in their own ability to teach their pupils. Uh, teachers in Finland typically uh, train to at least master's level and many of the teachers I met in Canada were master's or doctoral level as well. And I want to encourage our teachers at home to gain or to regain a sense of mastery of their subjects, particularly literacy within their subject. So I was able, I was privileged to have the opportunity to train our PGCE students, our student teachers at Queen's University Belfast, and encourage them to think about how they can develop skills now while they're training that they can then use when they go into the classroom so that they can make literacy in their subject really important and really accessible for their pupils. The second thing is one that I think is lacking in our education system here. Autonomy is really important to me. And sometimes here it feels as though we are constantly having to do the things that the people above us are telling us to do. And in Canada and Finland, they don't have inspectorate. So they have much more autonomy and I thought that that was a really interesting system and it's something that I wanted to bring home. One of the things that we've been talking about in school is how assessed we are, how much assessment we do. And we've had a lot of debate and discussion and I am really grateful that we are actually managing to cut the number of assessments we do in half so that Let's see how it works. I think it will work really well. We will still continue to teach the key skills. We will still continue to develop them, but we will have more opportunity to offer um, education to each pupil in a way that suits him best in our situation. So that's something that I'm really interested in and really keen on. And the final thing is just the purpose. Obviously, um, when we teach literacy, it needs to be fit for purpose. And we need to remember why and for whom we're doing this. If we don't change things in Northern Ireland, we are going to be forever born ceaselessly back into the past. And that is not acceptable. So anything that we can do, a future that is mapped out in this way, perhaps can help us. Um, so that's something that I really hope we will develop not just in my school and not just in the university but in the other schools around and indeed the whole of Northern Ireland in the years to come. And just as I finish, um, I wanted to say a huge thank you to the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust and to all the teachers and lecturers in Canada and Finland who helped me. And I honestly don't think I have the words myself to do this, so I'm going to borrow from Shakespeare, I hope you don't mind. In response to everything that I have been given during this opportunity, I can no other answer make but thanks and thanks and ever thanks. Thank you very much.